Hello, I'm Pastor Scott, and welcome to Worship with Sanctuary, a safe place to explore faith. Now, this summer, we've been working through an identity statement that we have that talks about what it means for this congregation to live as sanctuary. And last week, we actually finished that statement, and today we're picking up a, kind of a tagline, if you will, that uh, we created about the same time that we, uh, we established that identity statement. And this is one that we hear each week uh, in our worship services. We might see on our website and in, in other places. And it's, it's about what this congregation has been committed to, to be a safe place to explore faith. Now, we've talked a lot about um, that safe place throughout the summer and in a lot of other ways. And today we're talking specifically uh, more about that exploration component of that statement. And this week on Facebook, there were people that commented about what it means to be an explorer. I want to share several of those with you. Uh, one person said, find something or somewhere that excites you and go find it. That's exploration. Another was similar. They said, to discover something new and to share it with others. Someone else wrote, it means you are a forever learner, have a curious nature, an interest in broadening your understanding of all of God's creation. That's a, that's a beautiful picture there. Another said, uh, eyes open for the small details and grand vistas of surprise. Also packed and ready for struggle. Uh, they understood, obviously, that exploration involves some struggle along the way. One person talked about the evolution of their understanding and experience of exploration throughout their life. Uh, and perhaps maybe uh, some of us can identify with those different stages that she describes. This is what she wrote. She said, when I was younger, to me, it meant hiking and mountain climbing. Later, it meant taking my car on roads I didn't know, just following my nose and trusting my sense of direction to get back <laughs> pre-GPS, as she says. Now it means Exploring relationships with people. Exploring what I can grasp of the Lord. It also means ongoing learning, book and computer style. Exploring human nature and theology online and in classes. Exploring never ends. Transitioning to the next life will just be more exploration. I thought that was a beautiful picture and reflection on exploration through life. Now, in the first century, there was this man named Paul who also talked about the journey of faith uh, and, and working towards being uh, like God has intended them and, and created them to be. Uh, talked about that experience as exploration. I want to read this for you. It's from a, a book called Romans, chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. So Paul wrote this. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God and what is good and acceptable and perfect. Now, Paul, the writer of those words back in the first century, writing those to Christians who were, you know, Christ followers right in the city of Rome, um, he was encouraging them to create this space to explore the new avenues, new dimensions of faith, uh, new areas that they had not yet experienced, that were on the horizon, that they weren't quite familiar with just yet. He was inviting them to step out and to create the space for this exploration, that their minds might be renewed and their lives might be transformed in the process. Doing this was going to offer them greater clarity about uh, where they could see God at work in the world around them and perhaps even inside of them. Now, in the new Revised Standard Version, which is the version I just read, they had this word discern in there, to be discerning about what the will of God is. Um, now, that word is 
uh, different words are used for that same idea in different versions um, of the Bible. And so other versions would say, instead of discern, to work out what that new life looks like or to test it and approve it in some way in their life. There's a modern paraphrase version that says that um, this process involves learning from experience. You get this picture here that it's engaging, being active in this exploration of what it is that God is doing in the world around us. This is a journey of renewal and it's a journey of transformation. And it isn't always clear and it isn't always uh, comfortable. And yet this is the journey that we are encouraged to take. It involves observing what's going on in the world around us and not dismissing everything out there outside the church as ungodly just offhand, but actually creating the space to, to, to be analyzing it and taking a look at it and assessing it to determine whether something there is going to be facilitating our, our faith and our growth and our relationship with God and with others. Or perhaps in some way it might be detracting from that experience. Like Paul here is encouraging us to be actively assessing those things, actively exploring that kind of experience. The context here is that God is already calling us to a renewed kind of life. And that uh, life is not based on the values and priorities and ways that are existing in the world, but th there's a different way, perhaps, that God is calling us to live. And it uses our head, and it uses our heart, and it uses our experience. It requires all of us to be exploring in this venture. And also, it's, the heart of it, truly, is, uh, is God's message to people through Scripture, um, and in particular, the death and resurrection of Jesus the Christ. We're talking here, as I said, about an active process. This active process deepens our experience of life and actually matures us as human beings as well as people of faith. And Paul says that this is an act of worship to our God. Not necessarily as individuals even, although it is that, but Paul describes it as an act of the community's experience of worship with the divine. Now, this means really that we're not individuals approaching this exploration of faith, although we do do that, certainly, but it's a community experience together. And, and this just makes sense, that none of this can really be done very well on our own solely, that um, in a vacuum, it's much more difficult to be assessing the world around us. Uh, but when we are in the, in, inside a loving and caring community of people, that exploration can happen where we feel like we have our feet on solid ground. Um, now, some, uh, yeah, so we can really see here that Paul is encouraging us to a life of exploration, a life of faith and life that involves exploration. Uh, some 30,000 years ago, uh, back in the Ice Age, during the Ice Age, the, the northern part of North America was all covered in ice. And because of the lay of the land in those days, there was actually a land bridge that connected northern Asia with the north part of what we call now North America. And uh, right through there was the Bering Strait that, um, where there was land that there's now water. And that connected where Can where, uh, kind of where Canada is, but also where Alaska connects in to North America. And during those days, there was nomadic, uh, nomadic people who were hunter-gatherers who traveled from northern Asia across that land bridge and entered into the northern part of North America. And as the ice age um, shifted and as the ice melted, they moved further south. And then others kind of went through Canada and came down from a different direction. And they all kind of started to migrate south into um, North America, where we are in the United States, and then also down into South America. These were the first explorers, really, to, uh, to come into this land. Now, there were also a handful of other explorers that came many millennia later, including Christopher Columbus and many other Europeans, who talked about discovering uh, the Americas, and they first landed in the Caribbean islands. 
Um, they came as uh, like a, an individual a small group of people as an envoy looking for a trade route to better, um, you know, and then they actually became then colonists and they did some other things um, in this country different from those original explorers 30,000 years ago. But there are lots of stories of these explorers that came over in the, in the 1400s and the 1500s. They had a really rough go of it. Most of them, uh, actually more than half of them, as I understand, died because they didn't know how to, to fight the diseases that were present in this land. They didn't know how to farm the land. They didn't know how to weather through the seasons. Um, they didn't know how to defend themselves against the animals that they encountered here, all of which were so different from, that, from their experience. So those explorers had a much more difficult time. But the earlier explorers from 30,000 years ago came gradually and they gradually migrated. The, the people who, the scientists who have, who have looked at that history say that there was never one individual or even a family that made that whole trek from Northern Asia into what we call North America, but that it happened over many, many generations of time. And they probably came following animals like buffalo or whatever that were part of their livelihood as they migrated and adapted to the land as they moved. A very different experience than the European settlers. Now, I find it remarkable that the earliest of these settlers did this as a community. And I think this becomes a parallel or maybe a metaphor in some ways to the situation that Paul is describing in the book of Romans and what our experience of life and exploration is as people of faith and community. Those early people really realized they could not do it on their own. They had to be among people in their community doing that together. And the people from Europe that came over, they actually relied on the generosity and kindness of those native folk who knew the land. Otherwise, they probably would have all died and, and that, uh, their, that whole endeavor would have ended. Uh, they relied on a sense of community, literally for their survival. And if we think about that for our own church and our own sense of community, when we are exploring we look for our own survival from one another in those relationships that we grow over time and as we explore. Now, typical are stories um, when we think about new adventures in life. We hear about people who have gone off to college, perhaps, or we've gone off to explore a, a foreign land uh, on different soil with different culture and language and ways um, in their communities and life. And that has stretched us as people. And some of us feel like if we've done that, that the feet underneath of us seemed like it's washed away uh, because everything about that land is so different for us. And maybe we can take that sort of experience as a short, you know, uh, isolated experience and then come back. And so, but it's a challenge. It's a difficult exploration and adventure even. And there are many experiences that we have where we, we find not just culture that's different, but we find religious practices that are different. It might be um, sexual orientation that's different as we get out of the bubble that we grew up in from our younger life. And now we have a bigger picture of a bigger world as we explore. And it challenges those assumptions that we had when we were younger. As we work that out, as we discern, as Paul says, how we can acclimate to that new world that we've explored, it's helpful to have that community of people inside which it is safe to explore and, 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 um, and really learn how those things might be impacting our lives. Uh, another way to put it is that that community can anchor us when we are exploring the new dimensions of life and faith. The Apostle Paul never intended for people to go it alone. He always talked to people as a community because he knew that that's how people survived and thrived as they moved forward in faith and in life and how people truly mature as human beings. You know, being explorers requires us, requires of us uh, something uh, extreme even. It requires of us um, to get out of our comfort zone, to explore something new and different. And as we explore that terrain that is sometimes uh, brand new and uh, has us traveling in unfamiliar places, uh, having this sense of community is so important. 
And that's why this congregation has been committed to provide that anchor for the exploration of faith and life right here in Birmingham, Michigan. I invite you to pray with me. Dear God, in this life, we are explorers. We are encouraged into that life of exploration, often venturing out into rough ground or maybe unknown terrain and on untested waters, sometimes by choice and sometimes because that's simply what life presents to us. We pray that your Holy Spirit might provide for us direction and give us the courage along this journey. We pray that you would lead us within a community that we have been anchored in with support and love. We pray this in your name. Amen.
Thank you for listening to this online worship service here with Sanctuary. Uh, if you're interested in more information, I invite you to ch- uh, check out our website at sanctuary-church.com. There's more information. There's a calendar of events. You'll see other things that this community is involved in. Um, and also, if you have uh, experienced a lot of loss in this um, season, um, any variety of loss, um, we have a grief group that's starting later on this month in September. There's still spaces available. You can find information on our, uh, on our website calendar about that. You'll also find that on our social media platforms. You can find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram by searching on Sanctuary Birmingham MI. And uh, I hope that you'll uh, check us out in that way. If you'd like to take the next step and participate with us and in one of our uh, in-person worship experiences, uh, we are going to be worshiping right here in this very space, in this sanctuary, uh, next week, September 12th. Um, I hope you'll consider uh, joining us here at 1030 in the morning on Sunday. Uh, Now, I want to remind you of who you are. You are all children of God. You are brothers and sisters of the Lord Jesus the Christ. And it is through you that love and joy is present in the world. And I hope that you find the context of a supporting community as you go out and explore what this life and what faith might have for you. In the name of the lover, the beloved, and love itself. Amen.